You're listening to the Liberty Entrepreneurs Podcast, Season 1, Episode 4. Am I ready to hire a virtual assistant? Let's go. Hey, welcome back, everyone. This is your host, Ash, and we've got Season 1, Episode 4 for you today. Am I ready to work with a virtual assistant? You know, this is one of the main questions that I hear from people when they're starting to tell me that they're interested in hiring a virtual assistant. And, you know, there's a couple questions they ask me, and this is always one of the first ones. So what I did today was I put together a couple questions to ask yourself that I ask myself before I hired my first virtual assistant. And even when I'm hiring each additional of my virtual assistants on my team of four currently. So I hope you enjoy this podcast. Remember, I built a home base for you at Liberty Entrepreneurs forward slash season and the number one. There you'll find all the episodes of season one, how to work with a virtual assistant and all the show notes and resources really easy to find. So that's libertyentrepreneurs.com forward slash season and the number one. All right, let's get started. Number one, is this a permanent position or a one-off contract? At Liberty VAs, we concentrate on helping you hire staff to your team rather than contracting a VA for a one-off project, maybe a very large data entry project or a, a research project that you just need done one time. While those are great tasks for VAs, we don't specialize in those. You can find that type of work or those types of contract-based VAs on Upwork or maybe Fiverr.com, but that's not our specialty. If you do have such a project, you're welcome to reach out to me and we'll see if we can help you send it to apply at Liberty VAs, but I've just got to give you a heads up. That's not what we specialize in. Number two, have I defined the VA's role and responsibilities? Hiring someone just to throw a bunch of random work at is not effective. It creates a ton of confusion and misunderstandings. And if you don't have the role defined, then you're going to spend much of your time, especially at first, answering what seems to be random VA questions about what they should be doing or how to get their work done or what you're expecting. You know, if you have a role defined, then it's going to help a lot with the VA. I recommend talking to your VA and helping them understand the role and let them give you their input on what they think their title should be. VAs love to have a title. It gives them a sense of identity within your business. And it's a really good idea to help them help you establish part of that role. Number three, have I created workflows or training material for the tasks I want to delegate? Again, the point of hiring a VA is to save time. You should have at least one written or recorded standing operating procedure or workflow to delegate to your new virtual assistant. This way they don't have to come to you to learn everything, all the information from your head. Workflows and standard operating procedures also make it really easy for you to pass on tasks to other VAs or virtual members of your team without having to sit them down and tell them every step of the way. Number four, do I have enough work to fill up their time? This is one of the most common questions that I receive as well. And due to it, I've created a 10 hour per week VA service to help you get virtual management and delegation experience while also helping you build confidence that is definitely needed to build a strong virtual team. If you don't know if you have two hours worth of work for someone, two hours a day, so 10 hours a week, what I found to be really helpful is delegate the hour task that you have for them and then give them some sort of research project, something you're interested in. Or like I had a podcast, so I asked my first VA, Dexter, to go out and research all the other podcasts that were similar to mine. Who was the host? How long have they been around? What's their release cycle? How many podcasts have they released? What's the main theme of their podcast? What's their social media profiles look like? How many visits are they getting to their page? You know, just random stuff, not random stuff, but stuff to help me get metrics and understand who my competition is and where I can carve out my niche. Number five, how do I delegate tasks? All right. Another really good question. 
I personally use Asana to help create, assign, track, and set due dates for all the tasks that I need to be completed. This helps me keep up with the day-to-day -day progress of all my virtual assistants, as well as successes and problems. You can add notes to a task in Asana and it'll email you. It's got a really good uh, notification and alert system whenever there's activity on some of the tasks that you've created that you've delegated out. Other tools like Trello, Basecamp, and Microsoft Planner work great. I don't have extensive experience in any of them, but from what I hear and what I've seen, they're very similar to Asana and basically do the same thing. Number six, how do I keep up with my VA's work each day? So this is pretty similar to number five, but different. Each VA sends me their end of day or EOD report detailing the tasks that they've accomplished, how much time it took them, and any feedback that needs to be brought to my attention. I've included an example screenshot of a standard end of day uh, summary that my VA send me at the end of their work days. And so when I wake up in the morning, I have all of these to review. It only takes me maybe 30 minutes to review all of them. And I can very effectively communicate with them just through their end of day report and my reply back. Number seven, how do I pay the VA salary? So this is becoming increasingly difficult and PayPal actually contacted me. I was paying my VA out of PayPal and they contacted me and said that I needed to go through their international remittance partner, zoom X O O M.com, which is a subsidiary of PayPal. Well, it turns out that they canceled my payment for the very first time I tried to use it for quote compliance reasons didn't tell me what it was and they i emailed them and they actually never got back in touch with me so what i do as a service since this was a big pain of mine i've solved it by if you are a client of mine and you hire a virtual assistant i'll invoice you on the first of each month and then i will do the payroll and pay your virtual assistants bi-weekly on the 14th and on the 28th so it's just one monthly invoice for you a multitude of ways to pay it bank transfer credit card, Bitcoin, PayPal, ACH, etc. It's very easy and it'll make your life a lot more convenient. Number eight, what if I have trouble or problems with my VA? All right, again, we've got your back. This is a big difference between what I'm building and what most other VA services are. We are not just a matchmaking business. We help you out with payroll. You can send us an email, a private email address that only my clients get to email us for premier support. Um, you know, if you have a problem or have a question, or you're running into any difficulties, shoot us an email, contact us on Facebook or Twitter. We have a lot of resources to get feedback from our clients and from our VAs. You know, you may be acting in a way that's difficult to understand for a VA and they may get in touch with us or a VA may not show up to work one day and not tell you, and then you'd need to contact us. We can definitely be a liaison for both sides. It's definitely in our best interest. Number nine, can I afford to hire a VA? You know, that's hard for me to say, but we do offer a starter package that's 10 hours per week and it's only 300 US dollars per month. So the price point is really low. If you don't know, if you've raised any type of money at all for your business, then a VA is going to be one of the best bangs for the buck that you could possibly find. But if you have questions about the pricing model, or if you want to give me some feedback, then feel free to contact us and we'll listen to what you have to say. And if it makes sense, maybe we can build a product for you. And finally, number 10. Can I retain privacy while giving access to my platforms to the VAs? Yes, you definitely can. Tools like LastPass, where you can share login credentials without showing the password. That's a feature of LastPass that is already available and not very well known or used. Uh, also, many apps like PayPal, Bitcoin, Facebook, Hootsuite, various CRM and support and email management systems like Zoho allows you to create accounts with different user permissions, admin, you know, standard, elevated as a manager, stuff like that. So you can create these types of permissions 
to give to your virtual assistant where they can still get the daily task done that you need, but they don't have access to rec you or download your entire CRM database, et cetera. So check on some of these applications that you use and see if they allow you to set permissions so that your staff doesn't need you to log in or you don't need to give them your login credentials for some of your more sensitive applications and information. So that's it. This was 10 questions that I ask myself and that I think you could ask yourself before you start hiring a virtual assistant. You know, one piece of bonus material here is that if you're not sure what tasks you could delegate to a virtual assistant, two things. One is go to our website, libertyvas.com or the podcast website, libertyentrepreneurs.com forward slash season and the number one and download my free top 27 tasks to delegate to a virtual assistant. It's a PDF guide. It's only about 10 pages long, and it's going to be 27 things that I've either thought of or have already delegated out to my virtual team. Another exercise you can do is keep a little piece of paper, like a pad and a pen, beside you for one work week, for one week, and just write down the tasks that you do, even if they're really small, because those are the ones that you want to delegate anyways. But just write down the tasks that you do each day and go back at the end of the week, just look at it, tally them up, and see which ones you think that you could delegate to a virtual assistant. Then what you can do, come to our website, libertyvas.com, and send in your job description. We can take a look at it, and we'll tell you if we think we can find somebody to help you out so that you can delegate those tasks and free up your time. So again, this was season one, episode four, am I ready to hire a virtual assistant? And this is Ash signing out. Until next time, keep building freedom. Thank you.